This is intended to be a quick setup guide for the Retroid Pocket 3. It is definitely not a comprehensive guide, but I want to get you set up with a front end that I recommend and your basic emulators and their respective settings. Before we get started, I do want to remind you to hit subscribe and hopefully click that little bell for updates if you're enjoying the content on the channel. I am going to assume you've gone through the basic Retroid Pocket setup, you've let it install all of the emulators that it suggests, and you're looking at something like this. Now, the first thing I'm going to recommend is that we get rid of that default front end. So, let's open the Play Store and search for Digest Show. I really like this front end. It's free, it's very customizable, but it also feels intuitive and looks good. Of course, I already have it installed, but you can install it here from the Play Store. Once you've got it installed, go into your Android settings, choose Apps and Notifications, then choose Default Apps and Home App, and set it to Digest Show. That way, when you start up your Retroid Pocket 3, it will automatically launch into this front end. Of course, I already have mine set up with a lot of consoles, but it's really easy to add them. Just go over to Settings, choose Download Platforms, and it will populate a list of all the consoles that it supports. And it's a lot. This front end supports way more consoles than the default Retroid launcher does. And so I really like that. You can check as many of them as you want and add them. And of course, you can always come back to add more later and just hit import and you'll be good to go. Of course, I also have it already set up with a theme that I like and changing the themes is also easy. Just hop back over to settings and choose download platform wallpaper pack. You'll get a list of all of them. I'm using BB1 Dark but you can choose whichever one you like to try it out. That one's just the one I'm using, the one I'm in the mood for right now. Now I'll take you through and show you some of the key features that make me like Digest Show so much. If you go to one of your systems and you click this icon down here, you can change a whole bunch of settings, but most importantly, you can select which emulator you want to run that platform. And that will be the default for all games on that system. But you can still customize other platforms for individual games, which is very important, as I'll show you later. Now, to add your ROMs, you just want to click here on Paths, choose Add More, and then take a look through your files wherever you keep your ROMs. In my case, I've got these in the PC Engine CD folder, and then just add them. Then click Sync, and Digest Show will start searching through those new files. After it has a look at them, it will actually start going out and looking for artwork for all of your games to make life a little bit easier for you. You see right now, nothing, but just give it a second. And once it finishes scraping, I have box art for all my games. You can also set up widgets for things like Retro Achievements, and I really like the Highlights tab. You can either highlight newly added games or you can click up here and change it and see things like recently played or favorites. And you can look at all of your favorites across all systems or individual favorites for only one system. It's a really convenient way to access your game library. Now, I'm not going to take you through a full retro arch guide. That could be an entire video by itself, but I do want you to go and load up RetroArch 64, which you'll see right there. And I'm going to show you how to install cores, which is what you will need to play a lot of these older systems. Choose Online Updater and then Core Downloader. From there, a list will populate with hundreds of cores that you can download to emulate various consoles. It is important that you install the ones you want from here, but
before trying to play the games. If you just try to launch a game from Digest Show and you haven't downloaded the core, nothing will happen and it won't work. So be sure to set up any cores you might need from inside RetroArch 64 before you try to launch any games. And I'll show you again later, but also be sure you've selected the core you want from each platform's list in Digest Show. Now, most of these first systems I'm going to show you will all be using RetroArch cores. I will be sure to tell you which core I'm using and how you should set up your ROM files for that system. In many cases, there are several cores that would work and several ways you could store your ROMs. I'm just going to give you my recommendations. So feel free to watch the whole video or just skip to the systems you're interested in. Then jump into RetroArch 64 and make sure you've got the necessary cores loaded or the necessary standalone emulators downloaded. One other quick thing I'll mention because I've seen a lot of people ask it online. If you're tired of having that white bar on the side, just swipe down from the top, swipe down again to expand it, and then look for this icon right here. Be sure to turn floating icon off and then you won't have to deal with that white sidebar anymore. With all that out of the way, let's start taking a look at the specific cores and emulators I'll recommend. I'm going to start with all of the systems where I use RetroArch 64, and then I'll do the standalone emulators at the end. I prefer the Gambate, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Gambate core for both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. That's of course in RetroArch 64, and you can keep all of your games in zip files to save storage. For Game Boy Advance, I use the MGBA core, and you can keep all your ROMs saved as zip files. I'll skip showing you Game Gear games because you can use the exact same emulator for both Game Gear and Master System. I recommend Genesis Plus GX Core, and for both those systems, your ROMs can be zipped, no problem. When I play NES, I use the Messin Core. That's because it's supposed to be one of the most accurate and since the Retro Pocket 3 can easily emulate the NES, you might as well do it right. Your ROMs can be zip files. For the Sega Genesis, I recommend both Genesis Plus GX and Genesis Plus GX Wide Core. And that's because for some games, like Shinobi 3, if you change the core in Digest Show to Genesis Plus GX Wide, you actually get really cool widescreen gameplay. Here you can see there's a bit of an issue at the edge at the beginning of the level, but after that, everything looks great. And do note, you don't need to change the core for all of the Genesis games. You can do it on a per game basis for the games you want to play in widescreen. You can also use that Genesis Plus GX core for Sega CD. And I would recommend storing your Sega CD games as CHD files, which stands for Compressed Hunk of Data. You can get an application to convert any cues and bins you might have. You'll also want BIOS files, and they look like BIOS underscore CD underscore U for US or E for Europe or J for Japan dot bin. You put those in the internal memory in a folder called RetroArch slash system.
If you want to play 32X games, you'll need to get the Pico Drive core, and again, you can keep your ROM files zipped. You have a lot of choices when it comes to Super NES, but I use the SNES 9X core for most games, but also BSNES HD Beta Core when I want to play certain games in widescreen. It works great with all of your Mode 7 games like Mario Kart and F-Zero, but also with some games that have their own custom widescreen hacks like Mario World. And of course, you can keep most games in zip files except the ones with widescreen hacks, which need to be unzipped to work properly. For TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine, you'll want the Beetle PCE Fast Core and your files can be zipped. Turbo Graphics or PC Engine CD games will use that same Beetle PCE Fast Core, but now you should keep your CD images in the CHD format that I mentioned earlier. PC Engine CD games do need a BIOS. It's called syscard3.pce. And again, it goes in the internal memory in the RetroArch slash system folder. And finally, speaking about arcade games, I just use Final Burn Neo for all my arcade needs. It plays more modern games like Street Fighter Alpha 3, but also more classic ones like Sunset Riders. And of course, your truly vintage arcade games like Miss Pac-Man. Additionally, it is the perfect core for playing all of your Neo Geo games as well. And now for the systems where I recommend a standalone emulator, the first of which is the Nintendo DS. I recommend you use Drastic. Uh, it's just a lot better than any of the other options it's not free, but it works great, and you can keep your Nintendo DS ROMs in zip files. And of course, you can download Drastic itself from the Play Store. For PlayStation Portable, you'll want to use PPSSPP. It's definitely the best PlayStation Portable emulator available. You can check out my other videos to see how well it works. And I recommend storing your games as CSO files. That just stands for Compressed ISO. And you can do that with several pieces of software available online. PPSSPP is on the Play Store. For PlayStation, I recommend you use DuckStation, which I talked in depth about in a recent video. It should have been installed already on your Retroid Pocket 3, and I recommend storing PlayStation games as CHD files. For Saturn, you're definitely going to want to use Yaba Senshiro 2 or the paid Pro version. Both are available on the Play Store, and you can store your Saturn games as CHD files. I've also done a video on the Saturn, which you can check out if you want to learn more about performance or settings. To play Nintendo 64 games, your best choice is definitely the standalone M64 Plus FZ, which should have been installed on your Retroid Pocket 3, or 
you can also grab the paid pro version from the Play Store. And as is usual with most systems, you can keep your ROM files zipped. And finally, the Dreamcast, where you'll want both ReDream and Flycast standalone emulators. Flycast is free and does work better on some games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. However, ReDream performs better on more games, and with a donation of as little as $6, you can get the full version, which allows you to upscale your Dreamcast games, and that works great on almost the entire library on Retroid Pocket 3. Just check out my Dreamcast video. And that pretty much does it for this one. I tried to cover all of the systems that I thought most people would want to hear about. I couldn't take time to cover everything like 3DO, Jaguar, and I didn't spend time on PS2 or GameCube because honestly, I just don't think this handheld works well on those systems. Of course, if there's something that I missed and you're struggling with it, please do let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps you have a better time with your Retroid Pocket 3. Until the next video, keep gaming.